Hey guys, this is Josh here, Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I want to show you guys the amazing variety of medicinal plants that can be found in a lowland style environment. Here you're looking at spotted jewel weed or spotted touch me not. And one of the reasons it's called that is because you can see these spots that it has on the inside of the throat. Another name for this plant is jewel weed, and that's the name that most people will know this plant by. This plant absolutely loves low moist environments. As you can see, there are some cattails literally right over there. So this is a really nice, low, moist environment, and there are a lot of medicinal plants that occur within these kinds of environments. And jewelweed is going to be one of the most prolific that you'll usually see. You can see all of that orange, all those little orange flowers, that's all jewelweed. There's a whole bunch of jewelweed here. Now mixed in with it, there are some morning glories, and there's some wand bush clovers, and there's some other things mixed in with it. But for the most part, that is all jewelweed. Now a lot of people know of jewelweed as a medicinal plant to rub on the skin to help alleviate the itch or the burning or the rashing sensation that happens from poison ivy. And it does help with that just a little bit. It doesn't cure it. It doesn't really treat it. It just kind of helps alleviate the discomfort is really what it does. And there you can see the jewelweed and literally right next to it we have a bunch of bone set plants. Here you can see this bone set plant and it's just past its flowering stage. As you can see here these flowers are starting to die off. The leaves have been getting chewed up by ants as you can see here. However, this is bone set, and this is another medicinal plant. This plant was one of the most important medicinal plants of the 18th century in colonial America. So this plant is extremely important. This plant has been used historically to help treat break bone or dengue fever. It also can be used as a poultice on top of the skin for rheumatism in a drastic survival situation for the short term. You don't want to use this long term because this plant can cause damage if used too long for too, for too long of a period of time. And there you can see the distinct perforation that's caused by this stem through the leaves on bone set. And another common name for this plant is thoroughwort, which it gets that name because the stem perforates or goes through the leaves. Boneset is a really nice medicinal plant. One of the things I like about Boneset, I like to use it more for colds and flus and to kind of help promote sweating and I like to use it in a tincture form. However, it can be used in a tea form, but whenever it's given warm, it can promote diarrhea or help to evacuate the bowels, which can be good if that's what you need. So keep that in mind if you think about using this plant. And then if we turn around, we can see more Boneset right there next to Canadian Goldenrod. Here you can see this really nice flower cluster of Canadian goldenrod. You can also see some of this morning glory vine kind of growing along and twining around with it. Canadian goldenrod is well known for its ability to take over fields and it's also well known for its ability to cause allergies. However, a lot of people who think they're having goldenrod allergies, they're actually experiencing allergies from the ragweed. However, this plant's pollen can cause allergies and some people are allergic to it. But this is another great medicinal plant. This plant can be used for fevers. This also can be used as an expectorant. It can help with colds. This is a really good plant to know just in case you're in a survival situation. Just because the dried flowers make a really nice tea, the fresh flowers make a delicious tea as well. It doesn't taste too bad. Another nice thing about Canadian goldenrod is that it will exist anywhere there's usually clearing or sunlight. I found this plant in the middle of the woods where there's just some sunlight peeking through the forest canopy. I found Canadian goldenrod growing. This plant can grow pretty much anywhere to my experience, so that's kind of a good thing. So if you go to harvest any, you're probably not going to be hurting very much if you just take a few plants. Then of course if we look on the ground, there's plantain. You can find plantain, again, pretty much anywhere there's a clearing or anywhere that there's grass. Of course there's dandelion, which both of those are medicinal as well. Plantain is a mucilaginous plant. It can be used to draw out infections. It can also be used for bug bites or bug stings like mosquitoes. It's really good anti-inflammatory. The dandelion is a really good blood thinner. Its nutritive salts contain a lot of blood thinning properties and it's also very good for the heart. They contain a lot of vitamin A and the dandelion root also makes an acceptable coffee substitute. And as we continue to go down this way a little bit, I have to take a few more steps. And here you guys may be able to see the blue flowers of Great Blue Lobelia or Lobelia syphilitica. And that's one of the things this plant was actually used to treat back in the 18th and 19th century with syphilis. However, it didn't really work too terribly well. It's better to be used in place of Lobelia inflata. And Lobelia inflata is a relative of this plant and Lobelia inflata is a lot more potent. So that's one reason why it's recommended by a lot of herbalists that beginners use blue lobelia instead of lobelia inflata because it's not as strong. However, it does work just the same and they can be used for a lot of the same uses. Here this blue flower that you see is the flower of blue lettuce. 
Now this is one of the many varieties of wild lettuce that occurs within the state of Indiana and within the eastern woodlands. Now there are a lot of varieties of wild lettuce and they're usually very difficult to separate one from another. However, during their flowering time, they're usually a lot easier just because of the color of the flowers. One nice thing about blue lettuce is that it generally grows quite tall and here's a very medium sized plant that you can see here. It's only about three and a half, maybe four feet tall at the most. Whereas if I turn around and you can see this thing, you can see this big blue lettuce plant growing up there, maybe kind of hard to see, but it's right at the tip of my index finger. You can see the flower cluster right there. That plant is absolutely huge. There's its flower cluster there. I know this may be kind of hard to make out on camera, but this plant is about 10 feet tall. And this is one of the tallest plants that grows within the eastern woodlands within the forests. And it's the tallest species of wild lettuce that we have here within the eastern woodlands. One of the many uses, some of the medicinal uses of this plant is to be used as a sedative. Many Native American tribes within the woodlands and across the United States of America use the dried leaves and smoking herbal and herbal smoking mixtures as a sedative or to help calm the nerves. Another good thing about this plant is you can use it in tincture form for the same thing. So that's some of the main uses for this plant. It does have others. However, it's best used just to kind of help calm the nerves. But the reason it's a sedative is because it contains opiates. So you've got to be aware of that and make sure that you're not using too much over too long a period of time because, again, those opiates can cause your body a lot of harm. So be cautious of that when you decide to use this plant. While it is called lettuce, these leaves cannot be eaten raw. They do have to be cooked because of the opiates they contain and the milky latex or the milky sap that this plant has within it. You know, like if I pluck this leaf, there you can see that milky sap starting to come out. And that's why you have to boil these leaves in two changes of water. However, this is another medicinal plant. Another medicinal plant that usually occurs anywhere within moist forest land or anywhere within most moist land where there is trees, you'll usually find this Canadian sanicle. This is a great medicinal plant. It's really good for inflammation or cuts. It is a pain reliever. It does help to relieve the pain of bruising and the marks of bruising. You can use the leaves, you can use the flowers, you can use the seed clusters. You can use the entire plant for helping to heal inflammation. You can even put it in your bath water. This plant works really well mixed with yarrow and plantain whenever you make it into a salve or a balm. For topical treatment, this plant works really, really well. All the plants that we just talked about go all the way down to that clearing. So you can see in just a very short distance there is a lot of plants and there's a wide abundance of medicine available to you within swamplands. Yes, the mosquitoes are very bad. However, the medicine that's here is sometimes worth it, especially if you really need it. So I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about edible or medicinal plants, make sure to subscribe.